1998, my daughter Samantha, 17 months old, um, very sick. We were in and out of the uh, uh, hospitals, uh, doctor's appointments, uh, wondering what was going on. We really didn't know. Uh, we brought her back and the doctors kept telling us that she had the flu. You know, uh, go get her some ice cream, go get her a milkshake. Uh, she'll come around, let's see how she does. I want to say we were there probably once every two weeks. I would finally get frustrated and take her in and they kept telling me it was the flu, that it would pass, there's nasty stuff going around. Uh, you know, my wife uh, brought uh, Samantha in and we were, uh, you know, demanding answers, uh, trying to figure out what was going on with her. And, uh, we, you know, we asked that some blood work be done. And within four hours they called me and said, get her to the hospital now. And so they, you know, they said, don't let her sleep. I said, she's napping right now. They said, wake her up, get her to the hospital, don't go to the emergency room, go straight to the floor. We will meet you right there, you know, now. When we got to the hospital, you know, all of her veins were collapsed, they couldn't get IVs in, she was, you know, she was very sick that day. Her blood sugars were over 900, they said she never would have made it through the night. Um, she was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes. She was the youngest uh, girl in Michigan at that time uh, to be diagnosed and uh, the doctors really didn't have anywhere to go or know what to do with it. It was uh, new to us and uh, certainly new to them. I think it was probably the, one of the first nights after we got home from the hospital and Scott and I were talking about you know, how we were going to deal with this and everything and we made a pact right then and there that number one, she would be a kid no matter what and number two, she's a diabetic. You know, at that point, the doctor told me that uh, she's going to grow up, she's going to grow old, she's going to get married. I don't like it when I have, like I have plans or I'm with friends and I have to worry about when we eat, I have to sh give myself a shot and test, or when I'm out with friends and not all of them know what I'm going through and I have to pull it out and do it and then I get all the questions. Like I don't care that people talk about it or like when we bring it up in class I'm fine to talk about it. I just don't like the one-on-one -on -one questions about everything when people don't know what it is because it's kind of hard to explain sometimes. And just like them old stars. So what is the worst part about having type 1 diabetes? That you have to explain to all your friends what it is. My name is Katie Clark and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1977 at the age of 2. My daughter Ellie was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 2004 at the age of four. When somebody has a child who's diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, their normal reaction, you know, it's a grieving process. They're shocked, they're overwhelmed. The, the sheer volume of information that a parent has to learn to survive is incredible. Um, and they literally send you home with syringes and a vial of insulin and say, here you go. Even with the advancements, even with all the progress we've made, it is still a never-ending fight to try to figure this out. And I think most parents would agree that kids with type 1 diabetes have to grow up and be more responsible faster. And it's not fair. The people that are affected by diabetes and the, the damage that does the body and the, the uh, fatality rates uh, that are associated with diabetes-related illnesses and what that does to the body over the long term uh, is something that we need to, to bring more awareness to. We've had many different experiences with both highs and low blood sugars, waking up at night, being very low. Immediately I would sit her up as she's really basically having a seizure and being, being able to dump orange juice down her throat. 
many different episodes like that. Well, I won't give up on us, even if the skies get rough. I'm giving you all my love. I'm still looking up. Probably two or three weeks after Ellie was diagnosed and I was out online and I found a walk, a walk to cure diabetes. If we ever needed to cure diabetes it was now. So I signed us up and that was literally the first day that I felt like the clouds kind of started to, I started to feel like we might be okay. You know the JDRF has a great support group. I mean these people stick by each other. I couldn't have done it without support. So this year, Douglas J is trying to raise over $100,000 for JDRF to find a cure for all of us living with diabetes. That's a part of what we're here to do, is to bring that awareness um, and, and get more involvement and again, hopefully someday find a cure. I won't give up on us, even if the skies get rough, give it.